Hello and welcome to our Body and Soul Live session, which is an honor and a privilege to be here with you. My name is Jackie Lewis and I am the founder of The Broad Place. And The Broad Place is a school and what we do is teach globally uh, around three pillars, around how to enhance our clarity, our creativity and our consciousness in a very modern world. And at the moment, <laughs> there's no better time to be engaging with getting very, very clear on who we are as a human and what our purpose here is here on earth and you know, what, can we, what values do we align to and what can we do to support ourselves and other people. Also, our creativity is such a vibrant time right now to get really creative. Um, not watercolor painting, that, that's like a tiny facet of creativity, but our ability to think laterally and our ability to respond laterally and creatively to every situation rather than react. And then also the consciousness piece, flowing through consciousness is our experience of the world and our ability to experience gratitude, our ability to experience love, kindness and compassion. And so what my job is to teach people around the world around how to use those three pillars to really move into their higher grade self. And so today with Body and Soul, uh, what I'm going to be doing is sharing with you some philosophy and some practices and some knowledge and some tools. I'm really into applicable tools. Um, sort of esoteric, hand-holdy, kumbaya stuff is not really my gig. Um, what I'm really thirsty, always have been thirsty for, but particularly now is how do we ground? How do we stabilize? How do we not lose our minds? How do we trust? You know, all these beautiful philosophies that we're taught, you know, surrender and let go <laughs> and, um, you know, trust, trust the universe. Right now we're being really, really pushed to adapt and to work with those concepts. And so I wanted to share with you some things that will just give you the stability uh, and the grounding that you're going to need to not only support yourself, but also to support the others in your life. And I also wanna lead us through a beautiful little guided meditation. Now, to be clear, I usually teach a technique called integrated meditation. It's profound. It's a transcending mantra-based practice that we do for 15 to 20 minutes twice a day. And I, I just don't have enough time right now to teach it for you, uh, to you, but it's something that you can join um, me online and learn that at the moment. Uh, it, it's truly uh, a mind-body holistic practice and connects you back to your heart primarily is the most, the most important part so that you can trust and you can surrender and you can be loving. Um, but guided meditations, which are another facet of meditation, is quite a big um, term, it applies to a lot of things, uh, but guided meditations in regards to having an experience are also really valid and that's what I want to share with you today. And I want to focus as well on the heart. So at the end of our session together, um, I'll guide you through a beautiful practice. But for the minute, if you want to settle down and, and grab a cup of tea or a notepad and pen, that will be really handy if you want to make any notes because there's a couple of things that we're going to plant some seeds for you around the ways that you can support yourself at the moment. So the first really important thing to note is that most of us have been geared up towards optimization. So we've been really keen on the enhancing life hacking, you know, uh, the more sort of hedonistic pursuits of the mind body alignment and also spirituality as a society. I've seen this across the board. And what the, where the challenge lies in that is, you know, the idea of being our best selves and being our most creative and dynamic and uh, really pushing ourselves to our limits. That works really, really well in certain environments. Uh, but what a lot of us have done is forgotten about the stabilization. So that's things like taking care of our bodies, um, not in a you know, how do I look piece, but in a what's working for me in the way I move my body, in the way I sleep, in the way I eat and nourish myself, uh, in the way I respect and hold my body and love it. But also in regards to our mind, you know, am I engaging in practices and tools and daily techniques that support me on my path to greater creativity, clarity and consciousness. And when we're struck with trauma, uh, anxiety and stress, like we are now, um, there are some things that we can do and it's, we, what we really want to do is get back to the stabilization. So I want to share with you a couple of really, really important things that I want you to start taking care of. Because our mind and body are completely linked. 
So everything that's occurring in the mind is also having this shimmering, ricocheting effect down into the body simultaneously. And everything occurring in the body is also having an effect on our minds. So we want to create a harmony and an alignment with those things. And I study Taoism a lot. And it's a beautiful, beautiful philosophy. Uh, involves a lot of practices, which is around alignment to nature. Now, I used to, when I first started learning this, considered alignment to nature being nature outside. So there's a lot of talk about seasonality and about grounding and taking your shoes off and um, you know being in the earth and uh, really you know working with circadian rhythms and energy channels in the body and lots of gorgeous things. And also living in alignment, like trying to be out in nature as much as we can. The thing that I want to remind us all of, though, is we are 100% natural. Our nervous systems, our minds, everything that we are is also nature. So at the moment, while we're trying to figure out what's next uh, and be in the present moment throughout that, potentially we can't reach nature, i.e. go for a swim or go to the park or do the things we used to do. But I want you to also remind yourself that your body is nature. So coming back to nature almost means coming back to yourself and supporting yourself throughout that. So I wanna, I wanna lay out a couple of things that you can do. The first one is make sure that you're hydrated. It's usually one of the first things to go. You might, when you have a routine and a schedule, you're going to the gym, you're working out, you probably have a certain amount of water that you might drink all day. Water is truly one of the key parts, <laughs> one of the key things that our nervous system needs in order to function really well, as well as the brain. A dehydrated brain is not fun for anyone. So. I want you to start to think of, okay, what are the systems, the checks and measures that I can put in place every day to ensure that I'm going to drink enough water? And we're looking at about 1.5 liters to two liters. You'll be able to navigate and work that out yourself. But rather than, you know, um, you know, what we tend to do is like, okay, I'll drink, you know, have my tea and my coffee and my glass of wine or my gin and tonic. And they are also dehydrating us. So then you have to offset how much you're consuming in other areas with more hydration. So set yourself that marker of as a baseline one and a half liters of water a day. So it's four big glasses of water, not little tiny ones. Um, I like to have a water bottle that I fill up and it's one liter and then I pour it into a glass and just make sure that I drink two of those a day. That might be something that you can employ. But honestly, hydration is going to be unbelievably key for you emotionally not feeling dried out and brittle, but also physically not feeling dried out and brittle. We want at the moment fluidity, we want suppleness, we want strength, and it's going to come from hydration. The second one is around the breath. So without our breath, we can't survive. And so our breath is also a portal. I think of it as like a little channel for our awareness. Now, everyone talks about mindfulness. Be more mindful. We need to be more present. And at the moment, while a lot of us are glued to our devices and trying to homeschool and work from home and you know, all the other things that are happening, being present and mindful can be really, really challenging. So I want to come back to one of the simplest tools, which is to return to your breath as many times as you possibly can. So the first moment on waking, let that oxygen fill your lungs and gently find a natural rhythm with your breath. Throughout the day, as you stand there and wait for the kettle to boil, or as you put toast in the toaster and you're waiting it for to toast, or you're, you know, even as you're eating your cereal, or as you're, you know, going, doing gentle stretches, or reading a book, whatever you're doing, just be present with your breath. And when we panic and we experience stress, what we tend to do is breathe high up in our chest. So we breathe from here, up, 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 up. And what I want you to do is come back to belly breath. So that is where the belly expands out and expands in and the lower ribs. So we have the, those little lower ribs there that most of us think, oh, what are they there for? They're actually pressing on a lymphatic system which drains toxicity out of the body. And so when we're stressed, we're producing extra adrenaline and cortisol, what's happening is the top of our lungs, we're breathing like this from the top of our lungs only. And so that lymphatic drainage system isn't actually working to its full capacity. So when you're breathing, what I want you to do is breathe low from the lungs and then up. So it's, you start with this beautiful ballooning in the lower belly and rib cage before you move up through the lungs. And the expulsion of carbon dioxide is just as important as the inhale of oxygen. So when you're breathing in, I also want you to slow down your out breath. 
And as often as you can return to this, what it'll do is it'll become a channel, like a little tiny channel for you to come back to the present moment. So think of it, the breath as this thread that threads through every moment, usually unwittingly, usually something that we're not placing any attention on. The thing that sustains our life, we don't even give it any consideration. So what I want you to do is keep returning to that. And what you'll find is that rather than wild frantic thoughts, when you're doing that slow, beautiful belly breathing, your nervous system comes out of fight flight and it will gently move down into a state of rest and digest. From that state, then we can think more calmly, we are more patient, we're more compassionate, and also we feel much more grateful because it's very hard when we're in that stressed fight flight state to feel anything outside of anger, resentment, frustration, and all of the uh, emotions that are usually channeled through the ego. It's very hard to feel the heartfelt things. And so by calming the nervous system down, coming back into your body, being more mindful of the breath, what it does is it kicks open the door to us to be able to navigate from our heart. Okay, this is really important, particularly because like you, I am also interacting with a lot of family, extended family and friends and patients. Understanding and compassion is 100% one of the things that we need to be, or the things that we need to be working with right now. So we've got hydration, we've got continually ret returning to the breath. The third thing I want you to do is to give your brain and your mind breaks. So I want you to, first part of this, this is the part three, but version part A. Um, so part A is going to be to limit the amount of information you consume. So that might be by limiting your time on Instagram, limiting your time on Facebook, or limiting your time on uh, checking updates on Google and checking the news. So mindfulness and presence also extends to it's any activity. It's not like, oh, when I make yoga and I'm burning my incense. Uh, mindfulness is being present to any task. That's being in the shower. That's cleaning the toilet, <laughs> that's washing the dishes. It's the tasks that we all have to do in daily life. But it also extends to checking up on what's happening, um, checking our emails, checking social media, but be totally present to it. So find a schedule that works for you and reserve time. This is my social media time. This is my checking the news time. And then limit that time. If that means setting an alarm or setting a timer on your phone, so be it. But just make sure that you're totally present to it. When on social media, be completely on social media. When checking the news, be really checking the news. Not sort of making dinner and yelling at the kids and trying to do other things at the same time. Just really do one thing well at a time and you'll really notice the burden of stress start to lift and the pressure of anxiety. Because a lot of the time what we're doing is we're doing this thing that we call multitasking, but it's actually what I call mashing, which is mashing different tasks together. We get to the end of the day and we feel wrecked because it feels that I didn't really do anything. I didn't really achieve anything. I wasn't even really present to my day because I was trying to do a multitude of things at the same time. So when you check your social media or the news, just do that. Set yourself a limited amount of time rather than constantly refreshing and checking out what's going on. The second thing is what I call power down hour. Power down hour is so important. So if you check any type of device or look at a screen in the hour before you go to sleep, you deplete the quality of your sleep by 30%. So if you're, you're doing well and you're getting eight hours a night, then you kind of lost the equivalent of three in regards to quality because you checked a screen in the hour before bed. Now I know how hard this is. Um, the Broad Place is a digital school as much as it is an in-person school. And we have students all over the world on different time zones. I have this constant sense that I need to check and see where everything's at or, you know, hook in there and tea in there and check out social media. Not that hour before bed. So I'm even more, I'm usually pretty strict, but particularly at the moment, I'm being even more vigilant in regards to my checking. And that power down hour, the hour before I go to sleep and also the hour when I wake up are sacred. So there is no outside world coming in for two hours of the day. Now what you'll notice even when you sleep, you'll still be, your subconscious will be churning through all the thoughts and things that you experienced in the day. So just make that hour in the morning if you can, and definitely the hour before bed because we want to be prioritizing our sleep. Incredibly important. I want you to really start to value your rest and your sleep uh, more than you've ever done so before because it's going to provide this wonderful platform for stability. Now, I also would love you putting your devices on airplane mode at night. 
I know that not everybody is because I see sometimes when people are emailing us and I know the time zone they're in. And at the moment, there's a lot of messaging around like I was up at two because I couldn't sleep or I was up at you know four because I couldn't sleep or I woke up because I had a nightmare or something like this. And we don't want to be checking our devices in that time. So I want you to, as the third iteration of the part C, ensure that whilst you're not checking in that hour before bed, put them on airplane mode, everything on airplane mode, and then don't turn anything on until the morning. Now, I know sometimes this can be tricky because what we're doing is we think, okay, I need to be in touch with everybody. I need to know exactly what's going on everywhere. And yes, that is true. And if you have someone that is incredibly sick right now, that might be different for you. But for the majority of us, and that still remains the majority at this moment in time, for the majority of us, we actually need to be as healthy and as immune strong and as grounded and as calm and as enlivened as possible. And our sleep is one of the gateways to that. There is, ju it's just one of the most powerful tools and we don't want to be eroding that in this time. So I really want you to start to prioritize that and not check in the middle of the night. I hope that feels good. I'm going to refresh quickly. So hydrating our nervous system so that our minds can be juicy and our brains can be hydrated and flowing. Neural pathways are all linking up beautifully and ensuring that our bodies are really hydrated. So our organs are also working really well. That also helps boost our immunity. The other thing, actually, I'm going to add a little side note to this one. Try not to drink cold water. Iced water and cold water give our gut and our digestion a shock and can trigger fight flight slightly. So even though sometimes if it's really hot, you think, oh, I need a big icy juice of something, glass or something, I want you to eliminate the ice and try to drink it at room temperature. It's something that really aggravates our anxiety. So sipping on hot water in Ayurveda, which is a very old mind-body science that comes from India, but also in traditional Chinese medicine, you'll notice in a lot of the Asian cultures that they consistently sip on hot water, and it's because it soothes and calms the digestion. And that's very beneficial right now. They think of anything that's gonna soothe and calm you, ground you, um, make you feel peaceful is gonna be incredibly important. So icy water, not the answer. Um, and then the second part that we discussed was around, hang on, let me think now. The, we discussed powering down, so powering down before bed, powering down also throughout the day, so making sure that we're not consistently checking, being incredibly present to the things that we're doing, also unbelievably important. Um, and the breath was the second one. So with your breath, being aware of your breath. If you're interested in mindfulness, if you're interested in presence, then use the breath as your me uh, mechanism, methodology. If you're not interested in mindfulness and presence, then just use your breath because it's life-sustaining. Um, and it's going to allow you to turn off that fight-flight response and move into a rest and digest response. Now, these are all some of the markers for stability. The other one I would like to layer in is meditate. Just meditate. If you can't come and learn with us at the Broad Place, then do anything that you can, but ensure that you're meditating, and ideally in this kind of climate, twice a day. We want to be giving our minds and bodies at the time uh, to recalibrate and to return to a state of wholeness and allow the mind to also have some reprieve from everything that's happening. So absolutely meditate. I'd love to teach you, um, but otherwise there's a lot of options out there So, and a lot of great teachers. Now, I would like to guide you through, so this is different to what we normally teach at the Broad Place, but I'm going to guide you through a little meditation. So in order to do this meditation, what I'd love you to do is sit really comfortably. So that might be in a chair, it might be on the couch, you might be sitting up in bed, it doesn't matter, but I want you to have your back supported. Okay. And then I want you to put all of your other devices on do not disturb. So I'll give you a little moment to do that so that you're not going to get interrupted. And this meditation, what we're going to do is connect through the body to the soul and to the heart. So it'll be a body and soul meditation. And what I want you to do first of all is just to close your eyes. And just start to slow your breath down. Slow your inhalations. And slow your exhalations. So gently, easily coming back into the body.
And now from the crown of the head, I want you to envisage letting go of any stress that's held there. The very top of the head. And then allow that beautiful cascade of release to flow down your forehead and temples. And down the front of the face, releasing the muscles in the eyes, relaxing and releasing the jaw, the little muscles around the ears, and down the back of the head and of the neck. Softening into your throat, allowing the shoulders to drop. Ah, releasing out through the chest. Feeling the upper back, all those little muscles, all that tension, softly letting go. Around the rib cage releasing, softening into your belly. Lower back completely releasing. Awareness back to the shoulders. And now your upper arms are releasing. Gentle tingling of energy all the way through the arms as you relax and let go. Wrists, hands, and fingers. And now an opening and softening through your hips. Upper thighs releasing. Tension coming out of the knees. The calves the ankles, feet and toes. Now, a breath in. And with your big exhale, releasing any leftover tension. Imagine it gently letting go, dissolving out of your body. Softly, easily, grit, fatigue, and stress all letting go. Slow down your breath. Feel into that life force, that prana filling your lungs sustaining you, energizing you. Feel how the energy is shifting in your body. Feel how much lighter and more grounded at once you become. a sense of stabilizing, a sense of release and lightness happening at the same time. And now I want you to bring your awareness to your heart and imagine it's encased in a beautiful soft golden light And this little light begins to pulse with your heartbeat. Warm, gentle, kind. The energy of this light is so inviting. 
I want you to imagine that this light is now starting to grow. So it's moving from just around your heart, it's getting slightly larger, and it's starting to fill up your whole rib cage. This warmth, this empathy and compassion and love is expanding out of your heart and now fills your chest and your shoulders. It starts to soften down into your belly as well. And I want you to visualize this beautiful energy and light of love filling every cell in your entire body. So that you're bathed in this soft golden light. And now, let this light extend just beyond your physical body, like a little cocoon of warm light encasing your entire body. Feel your body being held and cocooned in love, in kindness and in compassion, all for yourself in this moment. Healing you and holding you. And now I want you to bring to mind someone in your life could do with a little of this love and light in this moment. And I want you to imagine this light extending out into the universe and encompassing them in this beautiful, warm, loving energy. The same beautiful healing energy that you had for your body, now gift it to them. That's someone dear to you. And now I want you to bring to mind someone that you're frustrated with or upset with. Just one person that you have a grievance with in this moment. Hold them in your awareness and now cocoon them in the same energy of love. Imagine extending out beyond you and gently and softly, perhaps even without their awareness of it, filling them with healing and love as well. I want you to feel into the subtle shifts in your body while this happens, the energy changing. And because we all have such an abundance of love and it doesn't exist with checks and measures, I want you to send this love out to any being on the face of the earth right now. Imagine it literally like little beams of light shooting out from you, out from your chest, to any being on the face of the earth right now that is suffering, that is hurting, and that needs a little dose of love. I want you to feel it pouring out of you, gifting everyone that's in need in this moment. And now, I want you to bring your attention back into your own heart and allow that soft light to come back in gently onto the inside of your body. But it can retain its fullness, filling your whole nervous system. We're going to close off gently the energy and the channel at the moment. 
And I want you to place a hand on your heart and feel how different you feel in this moment. I want you to acknowledge that this love is always available to you and that you can always self-heal in this manner. I want you to bring to mind one thing that you're grateful for in this moment. I want you to bring to mind one person that you're grateful for in this moment. And I want you to bring to mind an experience that you're having, an experience that might seem tough, but at the same time that you're grateful for in this moment. And now you can let your hand fall from your chest and take a gentle breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. Another breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. And now you can slowly open your eyes. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that uh, beautiful body and soul and heart meditation. Um, it's really important that we all remember that in any moment we can come back to that energy. I mean, just to take a moment to look around the room that you're in and see if it feels different, slightly different to you, your experience of the world, your perception seems shifted, or maybe not. And the energy in your body, how you feel right now, do you feel lighter, do you feel more grounded, do you feel any shifts, anything happen to your mood or to your energy? They're important things to note. And I just wanted to thank you for the opportunity to share this with you. I hope the tools and the philosophy was useful. I hope the meditation gifted you a lovely experience. And I'd love to keep in touch with you. And Body and Soul are going to put down all of our contact details so um, we can stay connected. Big love. Thanks for watching Body and Soul TV. Click the subscribe button to make sure you never miss a video.